Thank you for staying with us on Joy News Prime. I'm Gary Al Smith. And in the Euro 2020, England have already got themselves to a good start. Now they play the old enemy in Scotland. I was very privileged to speak to former England international Sean Wright Phillips, the son of Ian Wright, former Chelsea, former Manchester City player, on all things ahead of this very big game. Sean Wright Phillips, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing good, thank you. I hope you're doing well and it's um, a pleasure to speak to you as well. Yes, the Euros are here. I mean, we've been looking forward to it for quite a while. With everything that's gone on, we couldn't wait for the return of fans. I mean, while watching on the telly, how do you think the return of fans will affect the players and what will it do to them? And I, I think for me, you can see you can see the differences already in not just the, the performances, but the, the players' energy levels, considering they've come off the back of like a hard 16 months where it's just been two seasons rolled together. And the standard in the Euros in general is, for me has been outstanding. And that's a testament to the players and the coaches throughout the season and the coaches that, that have got them in the Euros now. So at the minute, we're seeing a lot of goals, which is always enjoyable for spectators and the fans that have actually travelled to all these destinations to watch the game. Yeah, I mean, speaking of the destinations, for the first time, the Euros is being spread across Europe. For a former professional footballer such as yourself, do you think this is an advantage for the players or not? Because they have to be moving I mean, for some of the teams, obviously not England. I think it's definitely going to be an advantage for, for some of the teams. Like, it didn't work for Russia, but they had home advantage in the first game and England had home advantage. So, of course, to have your fans backing you, there, there's always nothing better than that, especially if it's some in some places a full house. It, it's, it's perfect to come out and you hear the roars of your own supporters. It, it's going to give you that extra boost, boost and what you need to hopefully get the points in the game. You played for England, close to 40 appearances, and you scored a couple of goals as well. If you look at this talented English generation, there seems to be none of the it's coming home thing around them. Why is that? I think it's the excitement. I think that the one thing I love about the England squad now is it's a very young squad and they've all got time to grow together. And, and not only that, they play like the way they play at club level, I think. For me, it, it's so exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to the next game already. And um, at a minute, it seems like it could be coming home. So if, if they keep up the hard work, to be honest with you, because they, they have their attacking potential. If they keep their clean sheets, it, we're always going to create chances and score goals. And sometimes it might be an ugly win, but that is football. We've watched France, wouldn't say it was an ugly win, but they battled through and they beat Germany 1-0. And if you can keep picking up results and stuff like that for England, we're in, we're in a perfect position. England's next game is against Scotland, the very historical rivalry between the two. Have you ever played it against Scotland when you, you, you played for England? Uh, not, not on the stage like this. Um, it reminds me, um, I think it was when I think Paul Gascoigne scored, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That, that's, that was my, my vivid memory as a kid growing up. And, and I'm, I'm really excited for the game because for me, Scotland have to come out to try and either get a point or win. So it, it, it makes it a more exciting game because England, of course, want to win the game. I, I can't see England going in it for a draw, but at the same time, they know a draw takes them through. So Scotland are going to have to go for it, really, I think. Nice one. Uh, if you look at the entire Euros, it seems to have come to life. We've seen big players starting to exert themselves on the tournament, which is what you always want. Cristiano has two, uh, Lukaku has two, and so on. Which brings me to that question. Everybody says the elite players are going to be tired, but you don't see it. What is keeping them going, Sean? I think the things that are keeping them going is, is the desire and the hunger to be the best in the tournament. I think they don't want to let their country down or their teammates down so that they find the energy within them and the professionalism that they have to do that is phenomenal. Like I said, they... The season, like you said as before, has been incredibly hard. It's been tough. Even me, myself, for oh, the standard wouldn't be that high in this Euros because of the same thing that everybody's saying. But 
it goes to show like once your heart's in it and you're mentally prepared and you physically take care of your body, you, you can go on to do things that people might not expect you to be able to do. Outside England, who are your pre-tournament favourites? I keep, I keep saying Belgium because I just love that squad in general and uh, the way they play. But the way France are, they're so stacked in every position. I feel like they could fill two 11s and would most probably combat a lot of people's teams going into it. So it'll be interesting to see. But for me, outside of England, if England don't win it, I would like Belgium to win it. Belgium, yeah. I mean, they look properly tasty, aren't they? And also, you've got to look at the coaching styles already. It doesn't seem like there are a lot of negative teams because some of the previews also thought that, you know, the players will be tired and so the coaches will be employing very negative tactics. But you're not seeing that. You're seeing open and expansive football. But that's something we always want to see, especially in tournaments. You don't want to see negative football. I think the more that it's expansive, the more you're going to see more goals or more chances created and players that we want to see, like the bigger players, being able to express themselves because there's more space that's created by the other teams trying to attack as well. So it's worked out perfectly for fans, coaches, that they can put their game on the pitch and play. Like I, I watched Roman Lukaku play the other day and I thought he, he, he was quiet. But when you get a goal scorer in front of goal like that, he only needs two chances. Ronaldo, the same thing. Leading up to the game, he wasn't controlling the game as much as he want, but you give them sort of players in that elite category chances, they will score goals. And the rest of the players play well, like Mertens play well. And then you watch England and your Foldens and mounts everybody played really well so i love seeing attacking football i was an attacker so i really enjoy watching attacking football i watched all the games and i'm watching wales now now your family are a very somebody said you know when i interviewed him before this that england is like a social consciousness a social organism the english national team it represents what Ever it is that is culturally trending now. How proud are you, you know, with your background as a black player, that the team is in one voice in saying that this is what they want to do when it comes to taking the knee? It could have so easily been a divided front. I think is I think it's great that they're showing their way to fight against this vile thing that's going around where people think it's okay to racially abuse people on the pitch. I think football's a universal sport is so cultured. There's so many different cultures playing it around the world. And for me, there is no place for racism on and off the pitch. I just, I just think the people that do that are just ignorant, like that uneducated people. And most of them are haters because they're not doing anything for themselves in their life. So that's, that's my point of view on it. But the way England now are dealing with taking the knee is, is delightful. And, Sean Wright Phillips, the full interview will play tomorrow. And uh, you can find it also on our digital media channels at Joy Sports GH on Twitter and Facebook.